Lavos. We know how to beat him, but what do we really know about him? Surprisingly, very little. Despite his being the main antagonist of Chrono Trigger and later Chrono Cross, the game's story doesn't really touch on his origins or much else about his personality, if he even has one. Uh, is he just what the game implies, a giant parasite from deep space, or is there more to him? Does he have sentience? Is he aware of his actions, or is he just acting on pure instinct? In order to answer these questions, we need a place to start. His size and composition. And where better to begin than prehistory? This is the area when Lavos first fell, and how he got his name thanks to Ayla. Before he falls, we catch a brief scene of his flight path through space, uh, before he's pulled by the Chrono World's gravity and proceeds to smash into the planet, leaving a massive crater behind and burrowing deep below the surface. At this point, it's hard to determine his actual mass. Uh, there really wasn't a way to reference his size when he was in space, and the size of the crater is inconsequential, really, as even the smallest objects from space may leave behind a decently large impact crater, as we see on our own world. Then again, equating that logic to the Chronoverse is uh, kind of silly, because the game only uses real-life physics when it's beneficial. I mean, come on. Ioka would have been decimated by a huge tidal wave of lava when Lavos hit. The lack of sweet water is the least of your worries, random Iokan villager. You'd better have a surplus of ruby armor somewhere in that tent. For real, you're telling me that a chunk of zeal can hit the ocean and change the entire face of the planet, but a big-ass space tick falling from orbit doesn't do shit? <sighs> Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. The only way to really judge Lavos' size is by comparing the size of his fireball to the surrounding environment, as he's plummeting towards the Tyranno layer. But even then, there isn't really a whole lot to go on. Upon close inspection, he looks to be about one-third the size of the Tyranno layer. If that's the case, I'm a little iffy on his total mass and exactly what form he's in here. Uh, the game would have us think that he's in the form we see him in the Day of Lavos video at Aris Dome, uh, considering you hear the very distinct Lavos cry after he hits. The problem is, if we look at the Lavos eruption site in 1999 AD, as compared to the Tyranno layer side by side, they're roughly the same size. This leads me to believe that when Lavos fell in 65 million BC, he was still only a Lavos spawn. This would make sense, considering the party's sense of urgency to defeat him right away because he would be more vulnerable. And yes, if Lavos wasn't such a fast burrower, the party probably would have met him as a spawn and defeated him with relative ease, or at least with a lot less trouble than his later forms, no doubt. While this assessment seems valid, it is, of course, going off of overworld sprites, which we know can be tricky. Uh, Chrono and the gang are not the size of a house, for instance, and it's widely speculated that the areas we enter, such as in Aris Dome, are only part of a much bigger area, and what is shown on the map is only a portion of what's actually there. Even still, it would make a lot of sense that Lavos is spawn-sized either way, but perhaps slightly further along in its maturity, which would account for the cry we hear. And the spawns we fight on Death Peak are presumably infants, as it's a general consensus that the Cracker enemies that we encounter here are actually Lavos eggs. Which, uh, by the way, is really creepy to think about. I mean, look how fast they're appearing. Are we to assume that Lavos is right above us on the mountain in the screen, just pumping out babies? That's fucking gross! Anyway, moving on. In 12,000 BC, we next see Lavos at the Ocean Palace. This is the first time we actually see his battle sprite, and I gotta say, I don't think this is supposed to represent his actual size. It was probably just the game designers trying to fit a city-sized enemy on a screen where the player could fight him, and isn't actually accurate. He does erupt in this era when he destroys Zeal, and he seems to be the mass of his 1999 form. Um, uh, maybe he was only a short time from full maturity. You know, minus the genetic perfection, of course. It's not abnormal to think that he stops physically growing a somewhat short time after Planetfall, and maybe focuses more on draining the world's energy and splicing DNA within itself. Uh, later, in 600 AD, he's summoned away by Magus, but we don't really get to see him. And in 1000 AD, he's not even spoken of outside of Medina. The only allusion made to him is the townsperson in Truce who mentions this the recent earthquake. Uh, in 1999, the Day of Lavos occurs, and the world is charred and virtually uninhabitable, save for the few people who manage to survive and carry on a bloodline into the destroyed future. This is when we see him as compared to a few more landmarks, such as the domes. He doesn't seem to have grown since 12,000 BC. We don't even see him at all in 2300 AD. 
It's safe to assume, having attained genetic perfection, Lavos is content to simply reproduce and enjoy a long, happy life reigning atop Death Peak for all of eternity, or perhaps deciding to join his spawn and travel to other planets. Needless to say, Lavos' exact size is still a little shaky throughout the game, and it's never really referenced in a descriptive light, unless you count Alo's comment about his being HUGE but I think it's safe to say that the form you fight him in is not his true size. If I had to guess based upon my own perceptions, Lavos is indeed huge. Even if his battle sprite isn't accurate, he still dwarfs the party. Based upon that, I'd say Lavos is at least the size of a baseball stadium in width and height. Well, now that we know how big our space parasite friend is, we can talk about his composition. This is a toughie, however, because as far as I remember, there is absolutely nothing to go on here. Nothing is mentioned of what Lavos' shell is comprised of in Trigger, and Chrono Cross didn't shed any light on it either, despite introducing a literal splinter of his shell as a catalyst to the whole story in the Frozen Flame. It's very safe to say that Lavos' shell would have to be made of some pretty strong material. One, to survive the vacuum of space. Two, to ensure the integrity of the shell during entry into the planet's smoldering upper atmosphere. And three, to preserve the living being inside of it upon impact. It has been speculated that the shell is more of a biological spacecraft or spacesuit for the being inside, but that isn't lending much credibility to the creature itself. This is the first form we ever see him in, and even though it's revealed to have more to it on the inside, I think the shell is just as much Lavos as old Nipple Lasers McGee here. I mean, look at him. He's not just hanging out in there. He's got veins and tendrils hooked up and arms holding him in place. Even if he's just plugged in to control the space shell, doesn't it still, in essence, become Lavos? Regardless, in order for Lavos to remain unharmed during Planetfall, his shell has to be made of something very, very durable. Uh, to put it in perspective, the space shuttle is covered with seven different kinds of heat-resistant materials, used at varying times depending on temperature. The most important one being reinforced carbon-carbon. Yes, I said carbon-carbon which is more or less carbon reinforced with carbon fiber. You sick of the word carbon yet? Me too! The uh, RCC shield is backed up with six varying types of insulation that make up the entire thermal protection system of the space shuttle, allowing it to maintain stability and also protect the crew during the nearly 3,000 degrees of Earth's atmosphere during re-entry. That's really hot. So yeah, Lavos' shell better be at least that tough, or our intergalactic space tick would be barbecued before he ever saw land. There's also the possibility that it's made of some alien alloy that hasn't been discovered, but I don't really like to speculate that far. Uh, it can't be harmed by the party, as all of your attacks are directed at the soft spot, or quote-unquote face, for lack of better terminology. So is there anything that can hurt it? The answer is yes. There's only one thing in the Chronoverse that has been able to physically penetrate Lavos' shell, and it's the subject of the next Chrono video. Thanks you guys for joining me, and if you have theories of your own, please feel free to comment and also subscribe to my channel for weekly videos. My name is Two-Tone, see you later.